until it's Thursday about a little after 11 o'clock in the morning we've had about five six seven inches of fresh powdery snow now we got strong winds uh, temperature outside is 15 degrees below zero and with the wind the wind chill is about minus 44 so we're definitely gonna have us a white Christmas but let me tell you, it's a cold, blustery one, too. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Fun Night Friday here from the deep freeze in the Midwest. We're in the middle of Winter Storm Elliot, and right now it's warming up out there. Uh, earlier this afternoon, it was minus 15, and it's warmed up to a balmy minus 12. And with the wind chill and all, it feels like minus 44 or something like that. So we've gotten some snow. We've got high winds. Uh, they're recommending no travel. I tell you what, it is cold out there. I looked out my back door and I could have swore I saw a polar bear back there. Anyway, what I'd like to do for this fun night Friday is just kind of share some of my spoils. Now, Mrs. Knife Delights and I recently went on a little road trip and visited her family, uh, you know, my in-laws or outlaws or whatever you want to call them, <laughs> but their family, we had a great time, but I had a chance to stop at a, a pawn shop, and I got to tell you, I was really, really happy uh, after stopping at this pawn shop. These four items here, I walked out, and I think with tax, it was a little over $20 for these four items, so let's go over what we got here. This is a Forest Master, and this is a three-bladed camp knife, and you'll notice it's all wet and shiny. That's because it just came out of a mineral oil bath, because I'm in the process of shooting a video on this restoration of this knife, and I don't want to give it all away, but I am using the Stuart Harvey developed and approved method of soaking and cleaning these knives so thanks Stuart Harvey for giving me the suggestion and a video on this one will be coming out uh, not sure when but we'll get one out on it so anyway this knife here and it wasn't in, in worse shape but uh, it is mess missing the clevis so it'll give me an opportunity to try to manufacture a clevis for it this cost me a whopping one dollar folks and I've already got several hours of entertainment out of uh, working on it. So you can't get much cheaper entertainment than that. All right, moving right along here, what should we go to next? This is the buck, and it's the bones is what they call it. It's like a skeletonized knife. It's model, uh, what is that, 870? Yeah, 870. And uh, it's got this tiger-striped camel pattern on it. I was not real keen on this knife, and if I'd have saw this, this is made in China. If I'd have seen this in Walmart or seen it online, um, I would not have purchased it. It's just, even though it's a buck knife, it's not really my thing. However, this one cost $10, and it's in pretty good condition. But, you know, the, the blade, I don't know what the blade length is. What is that, maybe three inches? But, you know, half of it's uh, serrated. You know, that, that's just too much serration for this small of a blade, for me, anyway. Yeah, but it does have the nice uh, tanto. And when you look at this here, kind of like a, a spear point. And then this kind of kind of a decorative fuller, I guess you'd call it. Uses thumb studs. Um does have this little thumb ramp with jimping on it right here on the top. It is a liner lock. And then here's the pocket clip. And let me see. It is not reversible. So this looks like it's a tip-up pocket carry. And there you go. It is adjustable. Now, I've seen mixed reviews on this knife. I did a little research on it, and it's got kind of mixed reviews on it. Some people really like it, and others are saying, Buck, what are you doing? 
So I will say it seems to be awful heavy for no bigger than what it is. Again, the price was right. That's why I bought it. But this is not something I would have paid full price for, which if I didn't say so already, I think it was 30 or $35, something like that. Okay, next in line was probably my biggest and best surprise of the lot. This is a Cold Steel Voyager. And this is one of the very early er uh, versions of it. And as you can see, it looks brand new. If it was used, it was used very little. It must have been carried a lot, a lot because on the early versions of the Voyager, it had an integrated pocket clip. And as you can see, that pocket clip is broken. And that was one of the, uh, I guess, fatal flaws of that early pocket clip is uh, the clips would break off. Now, I was talking with RJ, and he was kind of speculating on, based on things he read, the reason they did this integrated pocket clip is because when these first came out, someone else had just come out with a, a metal screwed on pocket clip and it may have been, uh, you know, protected. So instead of getting a, worrying about a copyright infringement or something, they just made an in integrated pocket clip. They did later on change to a metal pocket clip. And again, this is the early version, and this is a medium-sized Voyager. They come in different sizes. I don't even think they make the medium size anymore. Of course, you know, Cold Steel, they didn't make a small. The medium is the small. Everything's big at Cold Steel. And the handle shape is a little different than the modern versions of the Voyager. This one also was made in Japan. That's another indicator um, that it's a very early model because... They had a lot of their early knives made in Japan, and they kind of switched to Taiwan, and then they switched to China. So there's a look. I This was $3. $3 for this knife. What a, what, a, what a bargain. It is very lightweight, and I do like this knife. And I might just end up starting to carry this one. Of course, I can polish and clean that blade up just a little bit those fingerprints off and such but it's in good shape and it is a mid lock back oh one other thing this does not have the triad lock this is before the triad so it's a mid lock back but check this out it's almost like a, a half stop in there now this is my only cold steel folder do they see there's kind of a half stop do they kind of put a half stop in their uh, folders? Please leave a comment if they do. That's kind of interesting, I thought. Okay, moving right along. Another big $3 purchase was a Leatherman. Who'd have thunk you could get a Leatherman for $3? And this is the Leatherman uh, Micra. Is that coming through? Yeah, there it is. Leatherman Micra. And again, this looks like one of their earlier versions because the covers look a little different. Uh, looking at them on the website now. Uh, but instead of pliers, it has scissors. And as you can see, it looks like it needs a little lubrication. The springs aren't working too good. But I thought that's interesting. And then you got a bunch of standard stools, uh, tools. There you got a cap lifter and a small screwdriver, uh, small, nope, another screwdriver, Phillips, it says four Phillips. What else we got here? We got tweezers there. Let me see what else we got. We got a small pen blade there. That almost looks like a small clip point, small, yeah, small clip point blade there. And then we got a standard screwdriver and then like a nail file manicure set there. And on the back side here of this cover, I guess on both of them, it does have a ruler in there. So you do have some measuring device there. But I just thought this was uh, an interesting little Leatherman. 
folds up nice fits right in your hand like that and it has a little better pair of scissors and last but not least I got this colonial electrician's knife now this knife was like sixteen dollars so I got one knife here for about the same price I got all of those isn't that something but this was in an antique shop and prices are going up but I did not have a colonial in my collection of electrician's knives and it's funny because I had just done the uh, traveling knife review on the Nipex electrician's knife if you haven't seen that one why well, check it out so I must have had electrician's knives on my mind so I just wanted to get another uh, nice specimen like this the blades in pretty good shape um, the actions pretty stiff on them that one you really got to push to get down in there I don't know maybe a mineral bath is in order for this one we'll see but I just wanted to share some of the things I found and just to tell you once again you know check out these pawn shops uh, and and the antique stores you can find some really good knives there I'm still ecstatic over getting this one this is really nice so next time until next time everyone have a very fun knife Friday it's almost Christmas we got two days away I will be shooting another video on my Christmas knives that I got for this Christmas so that should be a fun episode and I tell you what I'm gonna go up and throw a blanket on and turn on the TV and be a couch potato tonight because it's too cold to be doing anything else. So have a great week, everybody. Have a very Merry Christmas.